Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Monday, the 24th week in Ordinary Time, and we celebrate the memorials of St. Cornelius, Pope, and Cyprian, Bishop, both martyrs. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 735, O God, our help in ages past. Number 735, O God, our help in ages past. Verses 1 and 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saint Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in giving this instruction, I do not praise the fact that your meetings are doing more harm than good. First of all, I hear that when you meet as a church, there are divisions among you, and to a degree I believe it. There have to be factions among you in order that also those who are approved among you may become known. When you meet in one place then, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating each one goes ahead with his own supper and goes hungry while another gets drunk. Do you not have houses in which you can eat and drink? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and make those who have nothing feel ashamed? What can I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this matter, I do not praise you, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, he deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, not only St. Paul gives us the account of the institution of the Eucharist, which is the first account in the New Testament, but also he speaks 
of the implications of the celebration of the Eucharist in the lives of those who believe, in the lives of the faithful. The context was that in the first Christian community, after the disciples and all the believers started to proclaim the name of Jesus, they started to proclaim their faith in Jesus, they were kicked out of the temple and kicked out of synagogues. They could no longer go to the synagogue or to the temple to pray. And so they started to meet at the house of the members. And they will meet, they will gather together, and they will celebrate the Eucharist in the house of the members. But before they celebrate the Eucharist, they will have a fellowship in which they will eat and drink. And it happens that some of them will eat too much or drink too much. Others will not want to share with those who did not bring any food. And so St. Paul speaks to them. He brings this to their attention, saying that this kind of attitude that you have toward one another is in contradiction with the meaning of the Eucharist. Because when we gather together to celebrate the Eucharist, we are celebrating the sacrament of unity and not of division. We are celebrating the sacrament of peace and not of infighting with one another. We are celebrating the sacrament of love and generosity, not the sacrament of selfishness. And so St. Paul wants them to know that because what we celebrate when we come together to celebrate the, the Eucharist, it brings us together as one family of God. That's why we call it communion, because it brings us together in communion with God, with Jesus, and in communion with one another. Therefore, when we celebrate the Eucharist, it, it has to have an impact, a visible impact in our lives. As the Latin says, lex orandi, lex vivendi. What we pray is what we live. And so St. Paul wanted the, the Corinthians and also all of us to know about it, that the Eucharist is really a sacrament of unity and peace and love within the community of believers. In the gospel, we hear the story of the healing of the servant of the centurion. The centurion was a Roman. He was a pagan. But he came to Jesus pleading for his servant, his slave, who was ill and about to die. Actually, he went to the elders of the Jews so that they can plead for him and for his servant. And they pleaded with Jesus. They said, he loves our nation. He built the, the synagogue for us, so do something for him. And the Lord went with them. And as they, they went along the way, as we hear in the gospel today, the centurion sent his friend to say to Jesus, no, you don't have to come into my house because I am unworthy. So you don't have to come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. Only say the word. So the centurion, who was a pagan, has recognized in Jesus the one who has the divine power, the one who has the power and authority over everything. He has the power to heal, and he has authority over everything to the point that he can only say the word and it will happen. Which reminds us of the, so the story of creation in which God said the word and everything came to be. So in a sense, the centurion recognized the power of the creative word of Jesus. Each and every one of us here present, we have people that we know in our lives who are in need of healing. They have asked us to pray for them, to bring their needs, their intentions to Jesus. And so as we gather together to celebrate the Eucharist, 
we present those needs to our Lord Jesus Christ as we profess our faith in him who has power over everything. And we pray that the grace of this Eucharist may bring us to live together as one family of God in peace, unity, and love. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Entrusting our hearts to our loving Father, we bring to him our needs and our intentions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Robert Brennan, all bishops throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in shepherding the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For local and state leaders, may God empower them in enacting just laws and practices that promote the dignity of the human person and the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who lack adequate housing and resources, may the Lord provide for their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here and those watching through the media, may the Lord graciously touch our hearts with his merciful love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially Father M. R. Augustine, for whom this Mass is offered, may they see the face of God and live. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we entrust ourselves to you by living as faithful followers of your Son. We ask that you hear these prayers which we offer in faith through Christ our Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gift that gave them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give order to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in the struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sin. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless, bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 838, Help Us Accept Each Other. Number 838, Help Us Accept Each Other, verse 3.